Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to do a an old iOS icon in Photoshop. This is Photoshop CS6, but any version will do. <coughs> Excuse me. File, new. I do a size of 16 by 1200 pixels. iOS icon. So I double click my background and call it BG, which unlocks it. Go to the custom shape tool, sorry, go to the shape selection panel, rounded rectangle tool. Make sure you've got shape selected up here. Fill anything you like, doesn't matter because it'll be deleted later on. Stroke, no stroke, which is there, the crossed out line. So on your background, uh, with a shift key held down, drag out a square to about that sort of size. Oops, did that wrong. Do it again. That sort of size. Let go. Control T. One on the same layer. If you oh, if you if you accidentally uh, deselect the layer, go back to this layer. Control T. Hold down Shift and drag one of the handles out so it goes large. Oops, did that wrong again. Escape. Control T again. Shift, drag, let go, move it across, press enter to commit it. You can then right click the layer, rasterize layer, that's now a uh, raster shape. Raster man, anyway, let's get to the icon. I'm not actually doing this slow in real life, I'm doing it slow for you guys, so, anyway. With the layer selected in the Layers panel, control and click the layer, <coughs> you'll see here that layer, that shape has been selected. Okay, So now you want to go to your Gradient tool. If, it's, if you're on the uh, Paint Bucket tool, what you do is you hold the mouse button down until it pops up. Gradient tool. At the top, you click on Gradient, Foreground to Background. Now what I'm going to do is... Uh, Select my first colour as um, dark green. Okay, and my last colour, my sorry, my other gradient colour as bright green, like that. Okay. Now with this, make sure you're on on this uh, layer still. Shift and drag, click and drag. There we go. Actually, the top's not dark enough, so I'll change that gradient. I'll undo that and change the gradient. Back to here. Colour. Just drew that, drew that down a couple of stops. So it's a bit darker. So there's more of a contrast. Shift, click, drag. That's better. Now, Control D to deselect. And what I do then making sure that I'm on, the, I'm on the layer still. I go to the Select, um, Elliptical Marquee Tool, and drag it over to about there. Make sure the left and right hand side of the ellipses are um, equidistant to the uh, top of the icon. So from here to here is equal from here to here, otherwise you'll get an asymmetrical uh, asymmetrical um, gloss effect. So now I want to do control shift I to invert the selection and then magic wand tool alt click on some white space invert it again and then alt click and um, I did that wrong anyway basically let me start again so what you do sorry about that you get your select marquee select tool, sorry, your elliptical select tool, drag it over to about there, let go, control shift I or command shift I on a Mac, inverts the selection, right? And then, making sure you have this layer selected, get the magic wand tool, hold down Alt, and in any of the blank space around here, click that. You see, this selection is now inverted. We will invert that again, and Alt click again, and we get this uh, the right area selected for the uh, 
the gloss, the gloss effect. Finally got there, didn't I? So, your gloss layer wants to be right on the gloss layer in the layers panel wants to be right on top. So we now go to the gradient tool, click on here, foreground to transparent, click on the first colour stop. It wants to be white, and obviously the last one is oh no, sorry. What's going on here? Why is that doing that? Foreground transparent, so why is that uh, telling me the last colour is green? The last colour wants to be nothing. Hmm. Let's make sure the foreground colour is white in the main selection. selector. Go back to here. There we go. Foreground white, OK. The other colour stop is nothing. OK. OK, so in your gloss layer, click that, select it. Inside your selection, drag down. Ooh, that looks wrong. It was drawn, that's fine. So now we have the right gradient. Drag down. That's it. So there's your gloss. You can adjust the opacity of the gloss by dragging next to the uh, percentage here and the drop down above the uh, layers. So, um, oh, I did that wrong again. Sorry. See the selection here? You want to contract that by three pixels. Select, modify, contract. Three pixels. OK. Then you go to the gradient tool, select, sorry, this one here, select the uh, one you want, which is white to transparent, and then you shift, drag, it's a bit too shallow that, uh, there we go, there's our gloss, reduce it a bit to about, I don't know, maybe 70%. Seventy percent will do. Oh, we've got a nice three D icon there. And we're getting somewhere, aren't we? So next, Control Shift N or Command Shift N on a Mac. Another new layer. Call it Shape. This is your this is your uh, logo or your shape you're going to put in the middle of the icon. So go down to the Shapes uh, area. Custom Shape tool. I'm going to use a fleur de lis. If I can find it, there it is. Escape to get out of the panel. Making sure you're in the shape layer. Control, no, sorry, shift, drag a fleur de lis onto here. Again, oops, sorry, that wrong. Up here it wants to be shape, not path or pixels. Shape, fill, doesn't matter, stroke, crossed out. OK, so shift, drag, let go, and use your mouse, use the positioning tool to position this correctly. You see in the middle there's a little pink line, as I drag it, right in the middle of the flood of this, that is your guide, it snaps to the guide, you see. It's dead centre now, see that line... When that line goes, decreases to a dot, that means it's dead centre. Right. So now, right click this shape, rasterise it. It's now rasterised. Rasterman. So, double click this shape. Make sure you double click the icon itself, the square, not the shape name, because otherwise what you'll do, you'll get this come up. It'll try and change the name. Edit the name. Double click the icon. Select inner shadow make sure the inner shadow uh, panel here is actually selected as well um, change the mode to normal distance to zero pixels size to mm, 
three pixels maybe. No, that's not enough, is it? Let's try 90 degrees. Actually, I'm wrong, sorry. Distance wants to be five pixels. Angle, 45, 45 degrees. Is that right? No, 90. Let's try 90. So, the inner shadow colour, you click on this panel here and change the colour to, let's try darker green, a darker green colour. Select the darkest green on the icon and then drag it down. Okay. Actually, maybe black's better. I don't know. I'm trying to think what I did for my, my other one. Yeah, let's try black, okay? Doesn't matter too much. <clears throat> let's try colour overlay. Hmm, that's nice and bright, but a bit too bright. Colour overlay, I like that. Let's pick the green again. Let's go for a pastely sort of green, a bit higher up. That's better. Or maybe a yellow, what do you reckon? Yellow? Yellow? Yeah, that's alright, isn't it? That'll do, for the example. A bit bright, but hey. Not be too fussy about it. <coughs> Texture. Mm, no. See, when you select texture, it selects bevel and emboss, which is horrible. Go away, antivirus. Who asked you to pop up? Um. Yeah, what I'm gonna do there? I'm going to put a. Yeah. Well, you know, shadow's still too dark for me. I'm very fussy, aren't I? Anyway, so we'll forget the texture overlay on the inset to the embossing because that doesn't matter at the moment. Got the idea. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the main icon body called rounded rectangle. I call that main icon. So I like that and go to FX, drop shadow. We're not going to do a dark drop shadow, we're going to do a bright one. We're going to go to blend mode, normal, opacity 100%. Distance is nothing, size is everything. What we do now, click on the colour, pick a nice bright green, and you can see it's glowing like crazy. So I might have to reduce the glow a bit, otherwise it looks a bit over the top. There we go. Finally, uh, remove the background white by, by clicking on the visibility off. And go to image, trim, based on transparent pixels, leave all the defaults ticked, OK. There's your icon. File, save it as a uh, PSD, I'm going to call it... Um, YouTube demo <coughs> okay and save it again as a PNG there we go YouTube demo dot PNG got loads more here I've been doing there we go okay and that as they say is that thanks very much for watching Let's zoom in a bit shall we Thanks guys, God bless you, thank you, bye.